Coming to you from the Patriarchal Cathedral of the Resurrection of Christ in Kiev, this is Open Church from Javet TV. I'm Bogdan Manziuk, glory to Jesus Christ. Here in Kiev, the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church celebrated the 8th anniversary of the Revolution of Dignity, which falls on the feast of the Archangel Michael. St. Michael's Day is also marked as the National Day of Dignity and Freedom, including by our Church. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky lit a candle at the Ukrainian Catholic Memorial Church on the Kyiv's Independence Square, otherwise known as the Maidan. Here's Father Petrozhuk, the rector of Kyiv Seminary, speaking shortly after the event. The place where we're standing is evidence of love and action. There were no empty phrases here. Blood was spilled here for freedom and dignity. So we remember the hundreds of heroes who died here and became the catalysts for change, who gave us the feeling and confidence of freedom and dignity. In 2013, Ukrainian security forces under President Viktor Yanukovych beat and arrested students, including from the Ukrainian Catholic University. The ensuing protests lasted several months, and in the end, more than 100 people were killed by sniper fire. Soon thereafter, Russia invaded Ukraine, leading to a war that has been raging in the Donbass region ever since. A few weeks ago, we had Father Andriy Zelinsky on our show, and he shared some thoughts on the challenges for our church in a war zone. And sometimes our neighbors uh, living in a wounded by a sin world, don't know what they do. Mm -hmm. So we, yes, we do have to pray for them. Yes, we do have to find strength in ourselves to forgive. But yes, we do have to protect what is good, what is right, because otherwise the world will turn into chaos. You can find a link to that video in the description. The Synod of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church has called for the faithful to fast after satellite images revealed a buildup of Russian troops on the border. The Synod issued a pastoral letter in case Ukraine faces a renewed attack in the coming weeks and months. Here's what Patriarch Sviatoslav had to say about a possible impending attack last Sunday in Lviv. It is not enough to have dignity. We need to be dignified. We need to live according to the dignity which we have received as people, as Christians, and as citizens of an independent Ukraine. Even though people outside of Ukraine don't directly feel the impact of the war here, the Church's ability to be effective pastors globally depends on peace worldwide. We remember how the Roman Catholic Church was impacted by World War II in Italy, and we stand in solidarity with Melkite Greek Catholics, Chaldean and Ethiopian Catholics, whose churches are also caught up in war today. And speaking of Chaldeans, Father Peter Vakari, the president of the Catholic Near East Welfare Association, has made a pastoral visit to Iraq. He's meeting with Eastern Catholics in the Kurdistan region who are rebuilding after years of war with ISIS. Kanewa is working with the Archeparchy of Erbil to build a Catholic school and hospital in the city, as well as establish a Catholic university in Iraq. As in Ukraine, the church in Iraq is active in promoting institutions that treat psychological trauma among war victims. Last week, churches and cathedrals around the world were illuminated in red to advocate for religious freedom. Our patriarchal cathedral took up the mantle and was bathed in red light as well. The Red Week campaign, as it's known, was launched by Aid to the Church in Need in 2015. Organisers hope the strong visual message will urge governments to protect the nearly 250 million Christians living in areas of persecution today. Here's Bishop Yoselito Serna Isis, the Vicar for Migrants and Refugees of the Latin Archdiocese of Melbourne, speaking this week. This day is an opportunity for all people to stand in solidarity with persecuted Christians and others who face oppression, imprisonment, violence, and death for their peacefully held religious faith. 
Red is always a color of bravery and courage. Red is for the martyrs. Red is for our persecuted Christian sisters and brothers. In other news, the University of Adelaide has named Father Paul Babby the Bonython Professor of Law. That's the most senior position at the prestigious Adelaide Law School, which only eight people have held since the chair was endowed in through the support of our community, the church. In the United States, the Conference of Catholic Bishops wrapped up their annual fall General Assembly. This was the first event at which an Orthodox bishop was present. Archbishop Elpidophoros, the Greek Orthodox Metropolitan of America, spoke on the topic of Christian unity. Our dialogue of love should be fashioned by the dialogue and inspiring relationship between our primates, the Holy Father, His Holiness Pope Francis, and His Holy Holiness the Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew. The Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew was the first Archbishop of Constantinople to attend a Pope's enthronement in 2013. They both share the same concern for the protection of the natural environment, as expressed recently this September in the joint statement published together with the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, warning the world of the urgency of environmental sustainability and its impact on poverty. This dialogue of love between our sister churches is a clear manifestation of our common desire for unity, of our common desire for communion on both a global and local level. And finally, two major art projects are underway in two different churches across the world. First, the Ukrainian Catholic Cathedral of the Holy Eucharist in New Westminster, British Columbia, is getting new icons in the dome painted by three iconographers in Lviv. Meanwhile, the garrison church of Saints Peter and Paul in Lviv also unveiled a new ceiling, only this time it's a restoration of existing images that were painted almost 300 years ago. The church had been owned by Latin Rite Jesuits, but Soviet authorities converted it to a library in the 1940s. The Lviv Archeparchy reopened the church as a centre of military chaplaincy in 2011 and conducted a decade of restoration on the historic images. And that does it for this week's headlines. Thank you for spending your time with us on Open Church from Chevet TV. Join us at the same time next week for more news from around the world and from our church. We really want to hear from you. Share your stories with us. This program will not work without your input. Have a blessed day and glory to Jesus Christ.